day with New Mexico State, Jim. Well, David, uh, this team truly hopes that they might break into the top 50 in the country. That'd be a realistic expectation for them. They're much like Arkansas State, Southwest Louisiana, two opponents the Gators played last year out of that conference. All right, well, we're proud to welcome back Steve Babick roaming the sidelines for us again this year on Sports Channel. Let's check with Steve right now and see what's uh, up his sleeve. Steve? Well, that big sign in the north end zone might say, welcome to the swamp, but it has been anything but that for the opponents in 1990. The Gators in the swamp, 23-1 and one is their record. In fact, that 23-game win streak was ended last year at the end of the regular season. So the 1994 Gators will be trying to establish a new streak here in the swamp. And also, speaking about Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, a sold-out crowd today, a sold-out home season for the entire 1994 season already, the first time ever in the history that this stadium has been sold out this early that shows you about the excitement of this 1994 team and also what that number one preseason ranking can do for the excitement level we've got the crowd we've got the game new mexico state and the florida gators right here on sports channel today's broadcast is brought to you by dairy farmers incorporated milk it does a body good by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the little yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. By First Union and the First Union Check Card. It's the card that works like a check. And by Brian Foods, the flavor of the South. Country Club Body and Pain is the largest and friendliest body shop in the El Paso Southwest. John and Mario Munoz will walk you through each step of your automobile repair. All insurance claims are welcome, record service is available, and they perform expert custom paint jobs so that when your car is returned, it will look and be just like new. Labor Day weekend is our biggest sale of the year here at the House of Carpets, and we have Stainmaster Plus Berber carpeting for only $233 a square foot installed with Comfortwear 300. Our new Del Mar Light Guard mini blinds are 72% off, and our carousel pleated shades are 70% off. Even our ceramic tile is only 49 cents each. But that's not all. During this sale, you can save your hard-earned cash because we have 12 months free financing, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday only, and only at the House of Carpets. Would you do this to your all-leather shoe? You could if it were made by Dexter. Carefree, hand-sewn, comfort, dress, casual, contemporary. Dexter has it all, all waterproof, all washable, all stylish. When you're looking for versatility, good looks, and quality, Dexter Shoes, made in the USA. Available at the Popular Dry Goods, 139 Downtown Mall, Las Cruces. This is the coach. Coach, what happened? Congratulations, Great coach. What a game. Call the coach. A live interactive call-in show with New Mexico Aggies coach Jim Hess and hosted by Jack Nixon, the voice of the Aggies. Join Jack and Coach Hess for game highlights and previews of coming games. Call the coach live Sunday nights at 10 right here on Z48. The Florida Gators take the field in a sellout Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. The number one ranked team in the country opening its 1994 season against New Mexico State University. Coach Steve Spurrier has called this one one of the most important games ever at Florida Field, Jim Yarbrough, and that's because they're ranked number one. And as Coach Spurrier has said repeatedly during the week, that could be short-lived if the team does not perform up to extremely high standards earlier in the year. Well, I think that's also a case of coach talk. Uh, coaches are always saying today's game is the most important, and certainly it is. A lot at stake for young men like Jack Jackson here on the verge of breaking some records in that fun and gun offense. Uh, so many records broken already since Steve Spurrier returned to his alma mater, but uh, many more to come, I'm sure. Jackson. Deep to return, the opening kick for the 1994 season. Paul Kern kicks it away for New Mexico State. And we are underway. Jackson from the 14. Down he goes at the 26. And that's where Florida will open up shop. Coach Spurrier talking with quarterback 
Terry Dean. Dean with uh, redshirt freshman Elijah Williams getting his first start. Chris Bilkey, the veteran fullback. Aubrey Hill, a returner from last year. Jack Jackson, the outstanding performer at wide receiver. Jason Odom anchoring that offensive line, and it's a good one for the Florida Gators this year. Many to say that it is as good as any offensive line at Florida since the mid-1980s. Dean on a quick rollout, and he tried to throw to the tight end, Sean Nunn, and the pass falls incomplete. New Mexico State, the Aggies, defensively. Along that front line, Reginald Felder, an outstanding player, and their linebacking crew led by Samuel Manuel. Number 44, Tony Gray, and Bo LeBreton, another fine defensive player for the Aggies. Cedric Walton, 89 tackles a year ago, and he is their leading returner, returning uh, tackler on that Aggie defense. Second and 10 for the Florida Gators. Dean throwing again. Steps up the screen for Elijah Williams. He's got explosive speed, and Walton... The safety takes him out of bounds at the 41-yard line. All the Gator fans are looking forward to watching that explosive split, uh, speed of Elijah Williams, the redshirt freshman. You'll recall four years ago, there was a redshirt freshman named Eric Rett that had his first chance to play tailback for the Gators, and now it's Elijah Williams' turn. Williams, good-looking redshirt freshman from Milton, Florida. The Gators replacing Eric Rett now plays for the Tampa Bay Bucks in the National Football League. And Williams and freshman Fred Taylor figure to see a lot of time today. Dean throws the ball to a, an open spot on the field, actually threw the ball away out of bounds. Jack Jackson was the man in that area, but Jackson uh, ran a short route uh, down and out, and Dean thought he was going deep. Donald Beasley, number nine, uh, in coverage on Jack Jackson, just a... Uh... Looked like to a miscommunication as he checked off. They really came after him with a safety blitz right there. It's going to be interesting to see the philosophy that New Mexico State uh, employs to stop this powerful Gator offense. Right now, they're coming after the quarterback. Ball play to Williams. And Elijah Williams to the 47-yard line. Tony Gray, the inside linebacker, a senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, in on the stop for the Gator freshman. Head coach Jim Hess, New Mexico State, in his fifth season with the Aggies. There's his overall record, though. 20 years as a college head coach. Spent some time at uh, Southeastern Oklahoma State University where he played football and was the head coach at Stephen F. Austin for the better part of the 1980s. Third down for the Gators. Jack Jackson. Jackson to the 20-yard line. Well, I started to talk about uh, this being the first third down conversion of the 94 season, and I think they did a little bit more than convert to the first down, and we saw Jack Jackson with his running ability. Willie Jackson, of course, who graduated, was so great after catching the football, and Jack Jackson's in the same mold. Right on target, though, is Terry Dean. Look at that. Split that one in half, didn't he, with that pass? A strong throw by Terry Dean, who has had a fine preseason, excellent spring, establishing himself as the number one quarterback. First down from the 20, Dean with a little room. And the linebacker, Sam Manuel, brought him out of bounds inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Terry Dean, the, the senior, uh, a tremendous student, uh, as well as a great athlete and Coach Spurrier looking forward to seeing Terry play and run and be in charge of the front and gun offense. Almost a late hit along the sideline there, but I think it was more hustle than anything else. Of course, Terry Dean, the starting quarterback to begin last season and then lost that job to Danny Warfel, but got it back late in the year. Elijah Williams knocked down by Tony Gray. Short of the first down, near the 11-yard line. Well, the Gators are blessed with really three outstanding quarterbacks. Dean Werfel and Eric Kresser, a sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens. And all three of those guys can play. You'll notice the Gators are not even going into a huddle. They just walk up to the line of scrimmage after the ball's marked in play, and Terry Dean takes over from there. It's 
third and one. Williams got a block from the fullback. Elijah Williams out of bounds at the two-yard line. David, you know, Elijah Williams is more in that scat bat uh, mold. He's not big and strong like uh, Fred Taylor, another young freshman tailback we'll probably see later, or even Eric Rett. He's more of the scat bat, but look at him deliver the shoulder right there before he takes a hit. Be the hitter, not the hit E. Ball is inside the two, first down and goal. Williams, touchdown. Penalty flag. Well, they got on the corner very easily, but I think it was the tight end, uh, Sean Nunn. I'm not sure it could have been one of the guards that was pulling, but there was three blockers at the point of attack. The, the fullback, the pulling guard. Might have been Donnie Young. Obviously, they grabbed the jersey on that corner. The holding on the offense, the 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. And we'll slow down the Gator Express. A drive that began back inside the 25-yard line. We're in the first quarter from Florida Field, a sellout crowd here on opening day 1994. Hill and Jackson are wide to the left. Good protection for Dean. Fred Taylor, the freshman. Fred Taylor, the freshman from Bell Glade, one of the most highly sought after running backs in the country. And there's the first time he touches the ball in a Gator uniform. Taylor, 6'1", 214, but did he ever show some niftiness right there on that screen pass? It looked like he was going to be tackled in the backfield, but he, he juked out a defender immediately and then picked up some excellent yardage. Radell Anthony is checked in, the freshman from Glade Central High School, a high school teammate of Fred Taylor. Dean, touchdown! And it's the freshman, Anthony. <laughs> hey, all right. No, it's Hilliard on the catch. Number 19, Ike Hilliard. We got so many new first-year freshmen. freshmen out here. We got to keep up with them. Boy, there's some good-looking freshman receivers. Two of them were on the field there, Anthony and Hilliard. And Dean found freshman to Hilliard from Patterson, Louisiana, for the touchdown. Anthony is 15. Hilliard's 19. Those are new numbers we're going to get used to seeing in the fun-and-gun offense. Uh, Ike Hilliard out of uh, Patterson, Louisiana. His first catch in his career is what? A touchdown. <laughs> Pretty nice, huh? Not a bad way to start your college career. His uncle is Dalton Hilliard. Former LSU running back and his cousin's Ivory Hilliard, who still plays for the LSU Tigers. The Gators take an early 7-0 lead from Gainesville against New Mexico State. What was that easy? No pushy salesman, no waiting around, no gimmicks. Back out to the 23-yard line. What an impressive scoring march on Florida's first possession as the number one team in the country. Ten plays, 74 yards. Ike Hilliard on the receiving end from Terry Dean. Always important to start the game with success, and that double-digit drive, ten plays, culminating with a touchdown. Quarterback for New Mexico State, junior Cody Ledbetter. Two receivers wide to the left, one to the right. Ledbetter will keep the football and scampers out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Take a look at New Mexico State offensively. Ledbetter, the junior quarterback from Stephenville, Texas, and a talented backfield, Brian Pazula and Lawrence Truhill. On the offensive line, a pair of returning starters from last year, Gerald Slobocek and uh, the guard, Heath Hatch. The other guys are first-year starters in that New Mexico State offense. Second down and eight. Pazula, the lone setback. And the Gators come with a blitz. 
Lucius Davis breaks into the open field. Davis has outstanding speed. And Davis is going to score for New Mexico State. Cody Ledbetter picked up the blitz and made the play call at the line of scrimmage, Jim Yarbrough, and he hit it right on the money. Well, the neuter, new scheme of the Gator defense was to stop the big play, and what happens? The first series that the opponent runs, they get the big play. There's a pick. You see gonna, the defensive back's going to get picked right there. Lawrence Wright gets picked off. He was in coverage right there, and once he got picked off, there was nobody there except the defensive lineman in a futile chase, but uh, New Mexico State comes back with a big play against the Gator defense that in 93 often gave up that big play, and that's one of the things they've obviously been working on. Baba Kulin with the extra point. New Mexico State players, as they leave the field, mock the sellout crowd with the Gator Jaws chant. Very early, we're tied at 7-7. Okay, we want $10,000 down, your right arm and your left leg. Oh, by the way, the price just went up another 5,000 bucks too. Okay? Sign here. Hi, I'm Bobby Keir at the Payless Super Center. We've introduced haggle-free, no surprise pricing to make your buying experience a pleasant one. In every homeowner Super Center, you'll find the price down payment and monthly payment clearly displayed. No surprises, haggle-free pricing in the largest selection in the Southwest. Stop by the Payless Super Center today. The rodeo season is almost upon us, and if you're looking for the latest in Western apparel, then look no further than Cowtown Boots. And right now, Cowtown Boots has an abundant supply of women's Rockies jeans with new fall styles arriving weekly. A wide variety of women's Rocky shirts, and for the little ones, children's boots sizes 8 to 3 and a half, with prices starting from $19.95 to $39.95. Cowtown Boots, two convenient locations to serve you, 1248 El Paseo in Las Cruces, and 11401 Gateway West in El Paso. as we travel from Botswana to Borneo, Cameroon to Canada, and all points in between. Together, we'll celebrate nature's hidden wonders and humankind's greatest achievements, uncover the ancient secrets of yesterday, and explore the dreams of tomorrow on the world of National Geographic. Coming Sunday, September 18th on Z48. This is my stuff! My stuff! Chances oh, are your garage is full of old sports equipment. This is my youth! I have no chance. I have no so chance. when Stop you this. finally Stop decide this. it's Stop time this. to get this rid of the stuff you aren't using, this is the last call. bring it to this Play It Again down. Sports and we'll down. buy it. Let my clothes! Let my clothes! Let me down, please! Please! Help, help, help! This isn't funny! New Mexico State has struck quickly on their second play from scrimmage. So two plays, 75 yards. Lucius Davis on the receiving end. He took it mostly by ground to tie up the score. New Mexico State gave up a lot of points last year, about 32 points per game. But they scored uh, about 21 points a game as well. So this is a pretty good offensive football team, and they know how to throw the football. Well, new defensive coordinator Bob Pruitt, is, I'm sure, shaking his head right now. That's not the way he wanted to start the 94 season with his defense. Kern kicks it again, short. And Larry Kennedy knocked off his feet at the 27 or 28-yard line. Matt Fotone on the tackle in the 43. Florida's offense on the field for the second time today. Quarterback Terry Dean directed Florida to a 76-yard touchdown drive on the Gators' first possession. Fred Taylor and Dwayne Mobley check into the Florida backfield. There's Taylor, number 21. Wide receivers are Hill and Jack Jackson. New Mexico State in a 4-3. Down by a 
linebacker Sam Manuel and did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice job of coverage in the secondary. Playing New Mexico State, great blocking. Jason Odom just buries his guy on the left side. Mitchell doing a great job up front. Uh, Dean just did not see what he wanted, and uh, with the maturity that he has, he just tucked the ball away and took uh, a small loss. Gators have three receivers, no tight ends on the field. First down at the 42-yard line. Tackle made by Don Beasley. That was a four-man rush, David, and the uh, fake to Fred Taylor. Holds the linebackers. The linebackers step up, and there's no one in front of Jack Jackson. Beasley winds up uh, in good coverage, but uh, he was all by himself right there as he got no help from the guys underneath. First down at the 43. Draw play, Taylor. Fred Taylor running over people across the midfield strike. Walton makes the stop for New Mexico State. And the Gators get what appears to be another first down, or very close to it, at about the 46-yard line of the Aggies. Beautiful block by center David Swain on the linebacker. It's critical when the center's uncovered that he get a good block on the linebacker on those draws. And David Swain was responsible for a lot of that yardage right there with an excellent block. Rushing four men right now. On occasion, you might see one of those three linebackers pressure Terry Dean. On first down, Dean. A wide open receiver is Anthony. And the freshman has another first down. There's Riddell Anthony's first reception as a Florida Gator. Parrish Foster there to make the stop. Anthony, the true freshman from South Bay, high school teammate of Fred Taylor at Glade Central. Can you believe those two kids were on the same high school team and here they're on the field in the Division I program that's currently rated number one in the country? That's, that's a lot of talent on one high school team. It certainly is. Anthony was quite a defensive back in high school. He intercepted six passes last year. Here's Taylor. Broke one tackle, and Taylor to the 28-yard line. Tony Gray, the linebacker, senior from Cincinnati. Looks like number 40, Samuel Manuel, had a arm tackle attempt right there. Let's look at the strength right here of Fred Taylor. Great block by Mitchell. There's the arm tackle attempt. Actually, that was Donnie Young, excuse me, number 75. Donnie Young on the field right now at guard. Terry Dean wants timeout. A little confusion as Dean came up to the football. The Gators trying to run the offense without a huddle. And Steve Spurrier will talk it over with the senior quarterback. And we'll be right back. Here's driving. And they've got the ball at the Aggie 27-yard line. For all the latest scores, highlights, and interviews, be sure to join host Mick Hubert on Gator Hotline and Florida Football with Coach Steve Spurrier. And you want to know what's going on with Gator football this season, don't miss Gator Hotline every Thursday night live at 6.30 p.m. And Florida Football highlights every Sunday at noon right here on Sports Channel. Check your local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage in your area. Florida second down and five. Dean a quick cross and Jackson took his eyes off the ball. Headed upfield before he had it firmly in his grasp. And that'll bring up third down and five. New Mexico State that time coming with a six-man rush. Could have been seven. Terry Dean realizing the pressure was going to be on. Uh, goes to the quick hitch and Jack Jackson uncharacteristically taking his eye off the ball and dropping it. the first down for Jackson. Does Jack almost slipped the tackle for six. Oh, LeBrut LeBreton hanging on for dear life for New Mexico State. Now the Gators continue to convert on third down. They had a lot of success in the first drive, obviously, and uh, they continue to move the ball uh, easily against this New Mexico State defense. 
Again, this New Mexico State program, these uh, these guys went to Auburn last year, got beat 55 to 14, but uh, they've won more games in the last two years than they won in the prior seven years to that. So they are an improving program. Jim Hess putting a solid program together out in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Dean. Good protection, but running out of time in the ball. Oh, oh, what a catch. Oh, my goodness. Mobley at the one yard line. Oh, I, is he calling it incomplete? I thought the momentum took him out of bounds, but he wasn't hit. So uh, if he'd been hit, <laughs> his, own, his own momentum took still him out of bounds. Still a great of, catch. Wasn't it great? Wow. I tell you what that play reminds me of. And you Florida fans will remember a James Jones catch in 1982 against Miami when he caught it with one arm in about this spot backed into the end zone. Well, look at this. There's three guys. A hand grenade would have got them all. Jack Jackson, <laughs> Aubrey Hill, and Mobley inter intercepted the pass to the wide receiver, I think. James Jones is in the radio booth working uh, with Mick Hubert on Gator Radio broadcast this year. Yeah, he made that catch James Jones did in the same area. Jack Jackson, touchdown Florida. Well, they're making it look easy, aren't they, Jim? Well, they're so talented, and the offense uh, just put so much pressure on the secondary. Tyrone Brewer right there, all by himself, no help underneath. And the quick post route, watch the protection up front. No problem there. One, two, five defenders on the attack. Linebackers are caught up in close, and oh, nice hands. He held on with one hand, didn't he? Jack Jackson, the uh, maybe one of the if not the premier receiver in the country, certainly one of the premier receivers. A lot of times, All-America candidate is thrown around uh, rather loosely, but I don't think that's an understatement when you talk about Jack Jackson. He caught 11 touchdown balls last year. Terry Dean with a couple of touchdown throws already here in the first quarter. Oh, look, he just baited the guy uh, toward the outside. He was the inside of the two receivers on the left side of the formation, and he gave that little juke to the outside. Once he went inside, uh, Terry Dean was licking his chops. Gators take the 14 to seven lead. And uh, we're still not even halfway through the first quarter here at Florida Field. But now what has to happen? That new Gator defense has to get out and act like they deserve to be on the same field with this Gator offense. Gator offense is continuing to be the same kind of fun and gun offense we've used to, uh, over the last three or four years. Bob Pruitt comes in as a new defensive coordinator, had good success at Wake Forest, and uh, a new alignment this year, that 4-3. And you as know, opposed to the 3-4-3. Three, three. Jim, what are your thoughts on, on the new alignment? Well, I like it. I like uh, the four-man rush, the four standard defensive backs, and you got the one nickel back that either can be a linebacker or a or a coverage guy in the secondary, but uh, the Gator defense, every coach has got a new assignment on the Gator defense, so every one of the positions has a new coach this year. So I think the change is good. I, I think change sometimes uh, uh, inspires guys to uh, extra effort. A return by Paris Foster, and there comes uh, Cody Ledbetter again. The Yankees have only run two plays, but they only needed two to get into the end zone. On their first possession, long pass play connecting from Ledbetter to Lucius Davis. Now you see Ben Hanks here playing more as a coverage guy. Number 11 in coverage on the slot back. Ledbetter throws to True Hill. And a big fullback is knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line. True Hill did not play last year because of academic difficulties, but two years ago, he gained almost 600 yards and ran for 11 touchdowns, so he's a quality player. Steve Babick on the sideline. Thanks, David. The man in the middle of that shot is defensive coordinator Bob Pruitt. Now, Bob Pruitt, unlike a lot of defensive coordinators, likes to coach from the booth. He says you can see better up there, it's calmer up there, and you've got all your materials up there. I wonder how calm he was that first drive, but we know that Bob Pruitt has a good staff of good players, and he's excited about the chances for this 1994 Gator defense. Stopped by Kevin Freeman, the linebacker on Brian Pizzula. 
Well, Coach Pruitt's in the booth next to us, Jim, and the wall didn't come down when New Mexico State scored that first touchdown, so I think he maintained his composure quite well. Yeah, I'm sure he was disappointed, but uh, he, he knows what he's got, uh, the talent that he has out there, and he knows these guys will adjust to his new defense. Raiders on a blitz and penalty flags go down. And Ellis Johnson says, please don't throw one on me. Well, he bumped him a little bit, but he probably should not even have touched him. I think we're going to have two penalties or just maybe one. A dead ball, illegal procedure, false start on the offense. Be five yards. Oh, they didn't call a uh, delay. Uh, yeah, and I think that's a good call. He really didn't hit him very hard. He was, he was moving rapidly, but he... Bumped him a little bit. Look at the numbers on Ledbetter last year. Remember, he injured his knee midway through the season, Ledbetter did, and played with a torn cartilage for five games at surgery two days after the season ended. So this is a tough guy right here, Cody Ledbetter. And he better be because he just got knocked down and the pass is incomplete. There's a crowd cheering for that Gator defense right there. McMillan, Henry McMillan, what's Willen. the guy? And there's a stop for the defense, and you see the reaction of the Gator fans. Three and out, that's what you want with a defensive effort. And a 9.9 on the big play meter, say Gator faithful. <laughs> and just for the record, there were no New Mexico State players given the Gator jaws on the way off the field after this possession. Palmer back to receive the Chad Zeka punt. Corolla Palmer, Allard at the 44-yard line. And the tackle made by Dorian Williams, the 29-yard kick and a five-yard return and a favorable exchange for the University of Florida. Corolla Palmer did a really nice job in the, toward the end of the 93 season returning punts for this Gator offense. He's going to work his way into that wide receiver core, too. He's on the field now. Palmer. One of the wide receivers, along with Jack Jackson, Aubreyville, Terry Dean, in the first quarter so far, Jim, this is halfway through the first period. Terry Dean, 8 for 12, 117 yards and two touchdowns. We now have a tight end back on the field. Uh, the Gators started with a tight end, and he was out most of the first two drives. Dean throwing for Jackson, too deep. <laughs> was he open, though? He was there. <laughs> Donald Beasley was not. Yeah, man-for-man -man coverage. Uh, Beasley all by himself covering Jack Jackson. That's uh, got to be a religious experience when you're out there covering somebody that that's fast. Uh, you're doing a lot of praying, I'm sure. Hey, Chris Doring has checked in for the first time. One of the big stories from last year. Doring in a slot to the right. Yeah, that's true. Your freshman really uh, rotated in the before Doring did, didn't he? This is Aubrey Hill. 31-yard line, first down. Bo LeBreton on the stop. Well, the Gators lose Willie Jackson. They lose Harrison Houston, who are both in the National Football League. And I, I'm not sure that this receiver core may not be even better than last year, Jim. Yeah. There's a hitch by the inside receiver and a post by the outside receiver, and it's, the coverage just wasn't there. New Mexico State uh, backing off in their coverage. Elijah Williams, a pesky little running back, down to the 20-yard line. Tony Gray tripped him up. But another first down for the Gators. Now, talking about those wide receivers, Jack Jackson coming back. Uh, Chris Doring had over, uh, what, 30 catches, well over 30 catches last year. And uh, then Aubrey Hill was the third receiver coming back uh, but the freshmen they're, oh. they're getting on the field quickly anyway Williams the lone setback two receivers right and one to the left two step drop to Lola Palmer and the Gators have another first down inside the 10 Beasley knocks Palmer out of bounds <laughs> Palmer played some last year. He caught three balls and one for a touchdown. But he really did shine as the punt returner once he got that opportunity. And he, he was just looking for a chance to fit in the rotation. And he's getting it here early. 
And once you get on the field, David, you got a chance to show coach what you can do. Blitz. Touchdown. It's Jack Jackson for the second time in the first quarter. And was, Terry Dean has three touchdown passes in the first period. It was number one on number one. Cedric Walton, the safety, found himself matched up with Jack Jackson right there. Jack Jackson's the inside receiver on the twin receivers to the right. He's got plenty of real estate to work with as he breaks towards the flag. Look at all the time he had to wait for the football to get there because there was so much real estate with which to work. There you see on the left side of the field and then there you see way on the far corner, Jack Jackson with a touchdown reception. John Davis, now 67 out of 69 in extra points as he threads that one through there. 21 to 7, Florida, Jack Jackson. Already a pair of touchdown catches today, and Terry Dean has already thrown for three touchdowns in the first quarter. Number one ranked, ranked Florida over New Mexico State now 21 to 7. Not only in the first quarter, there's still five minutes, over five minutes left, almost six minutes left in the first quarter. That clock's not running too quickly, is it? No, it's not. Here's a look at the play, uh, at the drive, rather. Five plays and 45 yards. On one hand, New Mexico State, New Mexico State, uh, you know, they got a like score and a touchdown early in the game, but on the other hand, they, they used up almost no clock, and the Gators have had the ball almost the entire first period. But did you see that? The Gators used only, was that right, 58 seconds on that five-play drive? And, you know, catching the ball, the, stopping uh, the clock with the first down, you know, moving the chains, that'll stop the clock. And then they snap it real quickly once they are ready to go. Well, they look sharp, don't they? Offensively, they've never looked anything less than sharp on offense since 1990. <laughs> True. The first drive when Steve Spurrier returned against Oklahoma State, and they went right down the field in five plays. It's been that way ever since. Green Edge on the kickoff, Beasley on the return, and the tackle is made by Xavier McCray. Gray, a redshirt freshman out of Carroll City High School in Miami with a good special teams play. Now this will be New Mexico State's third possession of the first quarter. They scored on their first series on the second play from uh, the line of scrimmage. There were three and uh, a punt last time. Here's the fullback, Hill. Big kid, 6'2", 245. Big Lawrence Truehill taken down by linebacker Kevin Freeman. Oh, this Truehill, an academic casualty last year. They're glad to have him back in their offense. Out of uh, Hayward, California. How about Kevin Freeman? Takes him as a fifth-year senior. He gets his first chance to start. That's what you call a stick to it isn't it? it? Certainly is. That's one of the great stories in college football. On the option, right better. And picks up the first down for New Mexico State, it would appear. Michael Gilmore. Another interesting story. Fifth-year senior from Chipley, Florida, on this, this stop. One of the top academic college football players in the country. Gilmore, a Rhodes Scholar candidate. It's great to see so many of these kids excel in the classroom, as well as on Florida Field. first down at the 26 yard line and uh, on the carry is Kirk Compton not much room there let's go down to the field and now Steve Babbitt well David and Jimmy talked about the talented core of wide receivers last year and how this year's might even be better well there's one of them from last year Willie Jackson here at the game Willie a member of the Dallas Cowboys the Cowboys in action on Monday night uh, the opening of Monday night football against the Raiders so Willie Jackson uh, proven once again once a Gator always a Gator here watching the uh, the game and I'm sure he's got great impressions of Mike Hilliard and Reed L. Anthony probably sees a little bit of himself a few years back in those two guys there's an impressive run by Compton, Kirk Compton, getting six or seven yards on the carry. He's a junior from Roland, New Mexico. 
Still short of the first down. Now you see Darren Hambrick come on the field. A little bit of situation defense here. They take out the linebacker, Kevin Freeman. They send in the more athletic Darren Hambrick to let him help in an obvious passing situation. Third down play. And the ball thrown behind the tight end. McMillan putting a lot of pressure. The pass was intended for Sean Manuel, the twin brother of the linebacker, Sam Manuel. And uh, the Aggies will have to kick the football. Well, David, I've never seen an outstanding defense that could exist without a pass rush from the front four. The front four all by themselves have to be able to pressure anybody they play to truly have a great defense. So the other guys can play their positions and don't have to cheat and attack as well. Oh, this is trouble for New Mexico State. Hart has got the football. A high snap, and Chad Zecca never had a chance back there. I think Darren Hambrick may have recovered the ball. Hambrick, 42. Let's take a look at this. Uh, the snap is a little high, and it's bobbled as well. Kyle Luvar, I believe, was the center right there, but the snap was just a little high. It looked like he just mishandled it, and then it was all too late. Kevin Walton was coming right up the middle, blowing right through the middle of the field, and would have blocked the Unblocked. kick. And uh, apparently Malone, Kedra Malone, recovered the fumble. Ron Sook, last year's defensive coordinator, doing a good job of the special teams now. Red Taylor, the freshman to the 15-yard line. James McIntyre there to make the stop the strong safety. The sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Well, you know, every great running back, uh, they've got good vision and shifty moves. Let's look at Fred Taylor here, the freshman. Yeah, a little cut to the outside. Of course, it's nice to cut through holes that are eight feet wide. I like the way he holds on to the football, too, Jim. Taylor hit low, then hit high. And down he goes inside the 15. Yeah, that's very true. One of the quickest ways to find a seat on the bench is to give it up via the fumble. And the coaches love talent, and they love speed, and they love potential, but they don't like you giving up the football. So uh, he, he should keep that philosophy of tightly holding that football. Dan Mojaleski. On the stop, uh, his father and two of his uncles played in the National Football League. So there's a football family on the field for the Mexico State. Aubrey Hill. Aubrey Hill. Touchdown. And the Aggies had two defenders there to make the tackle on Hill, LeBreton and Beasley. And neither one of them could get him down. Aubrey Hill with 23 receptions last year, four touchdowns. Speaking of four touchdowns, isn't this Terry Dean's fourth? Yes, it is. Of the first quarter. Aubrey Hill really doing a nice job after the catch, too. He's, he could have been tackled by one, two, three defenders, but there's an arm tackle and there's a juke and really untouched almost. Judd Davis for the extra point. And he's four for four today. And the Gators lead 28 to 7 as Aubrey Hill and Terry Dean have given the Gators a 21 point lead. We've played less than one quarter. And uh, another one of those long, drawn out drives for the Gators. One minute and 11 seconds. Three plays and 22 yards after the fumble on the kick by New Mexico State. What in the world is going on? Terry Dean is 12 of 17 for 166 yards and four touchdowns. Doesn't it seem, though, that they're really on the field longer than that? They, you're talking about a judicious use of the clock. I think we're in a time war. <laughs> Me too. We can't get How out can of this, this be? Period. How can this be? Where's Rod Serling? He has to be in the sellout crowd somewhere. <laughs> Somebody left him a ticket, didn't they? Him and Elvis. My goodness. What numbers whew, by this offense? You know, Florida's going to have offensive numbers in one quarter that I'll bet you 75% of the teams in the country won't have in four quarters when you read the, the newspaper tomorrow morning. 
Edge kicks it off low. Michael Harvey on the return across the 20. And down he goes at the 22-yard line. Jason Bartley, a junior from Jacksonville, on the stop for the special team. Cody Ledbetter will try again for New Mexico State, who uh, scored on their first possession. This game was tied at 7-7 with about eight minutes to go in the first quarter. And now these guys, again, are a big crowd for them at home. Uh, their stadium is 30,000 seats. They've been drawing a, an average of around 20. Yeah, but they go to Arizona next week. Oh, the Desert Swarm, huh? They have an ambitious schedule early in the season. Well, you got to do that. You got to play the big guys. If you got to put them on the schedule if you want to play with them and recruit with them and move yourself up into that uh, elite group in the top 25 of the country. Hard to do. Second down and five. Ledbetter almost picked off Dexter Daniels. Junior linebacker picked one off last year. There's a new front four on the field now. We talked about the depth of this Gator defense, but they're alternating Cameron Davis and David Bernard. Johnny Church. Church on the field. Keith Council. Let's go to Steve Babbick on the field. Thanks, David. Uh, a great story in the Gator defense is Kevin Freeman. We knew Dexter Daniel was going to be one of the linebackers, but with the injuries to James Bates and Matt Pearson, Kevin Freeman, a special teams player for four years, is the starting linebacker in 1994, playing pretty good right now. It's a big moment for Kevin Freeman. He needs to play well. That's better looking for the first down, and Lucius Davis will have the football and uh, the first down. A good catch under pressure up at the 35-yard line. Well, New Mexico State needed that third down conversion to, to avoid a 35 to 7 first quarter score, probably. Yeah, you know, but, but the best thing about it is they keep the ball away from that right. part offense, so uh, that might be their best defense today, just to try and hold on to the football. Uh, first down, left better. Runs away from Barnard. He's got daylight. And right collars him out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Florida. Now the Gators have taken out an inside linebacker. They put in an extra defensive back. And uh, I think uh, also uh, another outside linebacker. Darren Hambrick was on the field. But uh, once the quarterback breaks out of the containment, Ledbetter doesn't have anybody around him because all the guys in the secondary are chasing receivers. A broken play turns into a big first down. You don't care how you get it as long as you get it. And they're moving the chains right now. And Florida territory. Led better. Sets up the screen but overthrows his man. Sean Manuel, the tight end. The Aggies set up a screen for him and led better over through it. Well, that was a nice call, too. The screen was there if they could have gotten the ball to the back. The Gators were rushing, and they dropped the ball over that rush. But uh, it was incomplete. Ryan Pazula, Lawrence Truehill back in the backfield behind Cody Ledbetter. Second down and 10 to Mexico State. Hill on a play fake, and the pass is incomplete. Osborne, the intended receiver, good, good hands type of guy. Not great speed, but he could not hang on to that one. Kevin Carter, Kevin Carter with pressure. I, I mentioned that you got to have great pressure, not just good pressure. You have to have great pressure from your fr front four if you're going to be a dominating defense. Somebody has to step up in that group of the front four and just dominate the line of scrimmage. And Kevin Carter's capable of doing it. And better throwing it deep for Osborne again. Two Gators were there, but you got a penalty flag. Yeah, I think they said that uh, Anthony Lott pushed a little bit. He, it was very subtle. Uh, but I was, as I was watching it anyway, see, he's talking to Lott 
It was very subtle, but there was a little bit of a push right there. On the defense. Pass interference on Anthone Lott. The Gators had good coverage on Osborne, too, so. A lot was playing much like a center fielder right there, even though he was the corner. He also held, had help uh, from Gilmore. But look, as as uh, Anthony Lott tries to settle under the ball, he, well, you didn't see it from that angle, but uh, there was a slight little push, and they called the flag out. And the Gators had excellent coverage. It really was uh, a well-covered play by the Gator defense. The first down and a handoff to Compton. Bart is all over it. Johnny Church is there. Who made that first hit? That was a giant hit by, oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Ellis Johnson. Ellis Johnson. It was all American nose, candidate. Nose to nose, lips to lips right here. Watch, watch. Oh, look at the quick inside move. He just uh, destroyed the block of big number 70, Brian Blair. Not only are these guys big and strong, but you have to have that quickness that he displayed right there if you're going to make those kind of plays. Time ticking down in the first quarter. And New Mexico State won't get the snap off. Boy, we just breezed through that first period, didn't we? It's 28 <laughs> to 7. Florida leading New Mexico State from Florida Field. Norwegian Cruise Line. It's different out here. By Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. And by Cellular One. The first and only with digital phone service. Cellular One. You heard it here first. The second quarter begins from Florida Field. New Mexico State second down and 13. Ledbetter. What a throw and a great catch by Davis. Touchdown Aggies. That was a quality throw and catch by New Mexico State. This team knows how to throw the football. Lucius Davis. Well, there are a lot of second teams. Second touchdown catch of the day. A lot of teams on your schedule are going to know how to throw the football. That's one of the problems. You've got to be able to stop both the run and the pass. And unfortunately, there's the Achilles heel of this Gator defense uh, most recently the big play Lucius Davis right there getting behind the secondary and as you mentioned Ledbetter just threw a beautiful pass and lobbed it in there for another score for the Aggies Bubba Kulin with the extra point and that will cut the lead back to 14 a high scoring game as Ledbetter has thrown a pair of touchdown passes now to Lucius Davis in the first half of this game. You saw a lot of defenders chasing the play action towards the right of the formation. Once Ledbetter got out to the left side, he had no pressure at all and was able to, to get uh, the football easily into the end zone. Well-thrown pass, big touchdown for the Aggies. And that was the first play of the second quarter. And 42 points have been placed on the board already in this football game. Ledbetter, maybe one of the top quarterbacks in the bit, maybe the top quarterback in the Big West, Big West Conference. He's a big kid, 6'2", 205 pounds. Did a real nice job for him, as you mentioned, last year, and certainly he's off to a good start to, in a difficult situation as his team trails uh, by three touchdowns. A lot of pressure coming from the Gator defense and they come back with this kind of answer 78 yards nine plays that's a real nice try. of course remember that penalty uh, on Anthony Lott that didn't help the Gator cause at all but uh, it certainly helped the Aggies keep their drive alive and they finished it off with a touchdown Paul Kern will kick off for New Mexico State Jack Jackson and Larry Kennedy standing deep at about the five yard line to put the ball in the hands of Jackson. And that might have been a big mistake. A very big mistake. To the 46-yard line goes Jack Jackson. Dorian Williams saved the touchdown, and there's a penalty flag thrown in late on top of the play. 
Now, you mentioned Ron Zook has been given the responsibilities of the specialty teams. Uh, last year's defensive coordinator now coaches the Nickelbacks and the specialty teams, and that was another beautiful play by the specialty teams. A gaping hole, and five yards or an additional five yards. Look at the blocking that Jack Jackson gets right here. He's got a couple options, inside or outside. Bilkey trying to help out with a block. Finally does right there. Nice job, nice effort by Bilkey, but this looks like number 14. Dorian Williams grabbed the mask inadvertently. Dean going for broke. And there's a flag. Yes, sir. Riddell Anthony, the intended receiver. And Parrish Foster was yeah. all over it. You can't call a foul on Anthony Lott and then not call that foul on Parrish Foster. He, he was in good so shape, but the bump was there. On the defense. The Let's see if the grab was there, too. First down. Going for the bomb up the sideline to... Yeah, there's the grab right there. That was to Rodell Anthony, another... Young freshman, true freshman. You know, in just about every, if not every, scrimmage in the preseason, Anthony has caught a long touchdown pass. Look at Dean's numbers. But this Anthony has the kind of breakaway speed to get behind the defense. And then he can catch the ball as well. Dean threw six touchdown passes against Southwest Louisiana, another Big West school last year. And uh, already four thrown today by Mr. Dean. Little reverse, Jack Jackson. And that's going to be uh, an illegal block. Jackson to the 20-yard line, but the Gators are going to be penalized here. It's Jason Odom, I think, blocked uh, from behind. Tony Young also out there, number 75. Somebody got the attention of the umpire on the hold. I'm holding on the offense. Penalty. Replay the down. Let's take a look at Jason Odom on the left side. Out of the view. Right, what's he going to do? Oh, he's pushing. Oh, yeah, right there. He was pushing in the side, which is okay. But when the guy turns his back to you, you can't finish off the push. And Jason very aggressively trying to finish the guy off and pushed him in the back. Odom starting for the 24th consecutive game. Second team all Southeastern Conference last year. And should have been first. Yeah, and he's, he's a great one. Going to be truly a great one before he finishes at UF. Elijah Williams inside the 35 to the 33. Steve Babick on the sideline with a report. Steve? All eyes are focused on Anthony Grassi at right tackle. Here's a guy that beat out a preseason All-American in Reggie Green. Got the start here in 1994. Played about the first three offensive series. Reggie Green came in late in the first quarter. Now Anthony Grassi is back in there. This is a big game for Anthony. He's waited a long time for his chance to start. Of course, his story is he transferred from Boston University, trying to go from a small program to the big time with the Florida Gators. Play action. Dean throwing it. For Anthony again, and it is incomplete in the back of the end zone. And the fans down there thought maybe another <laughs> yellow flag could have been thrown. <laughs> the kid stuck in the hedge. <laughs> he did a flip into the hedge. Uh, the feet did get tangled up, but there was no, no flag. There was a bit of a trip there. Let's see. Is that Michael Harvey, number 38? Great protection up front. A little bit of pressure towards the end by Cat. Chris Braun. Yeah, no foul. No. No, he tripped. Yeah. And he, he wakes up in the hedge and he needed help <laughs> digging out. Third down conversion. Can they do it? Yep. I kill your to the 10. He caught the touchdown in the first quarter. The first touchdown of the day for the Gators. And a freshman from Louisiana from the famed Hilliard clan and the Bayou State makes his second catch as a Gator. Now we get an idea of why Chris Doring might have lost a spot in that rotation early. Look at the talent here of Hilliard. We saw Anthony a moment ago. Two terrific young true freshmen. Big third down pick up there for the Gators. Dean will throw it again. And it'll be caught. So Roller Palmer. That is Sorola Palmer's first touchdown catch as a Gator. 
I like Hilliard was right there with him. I wasn't sure if Terry Dean was going to Hilliard or Palmer, but uh, he says I was going to Palmer. Oh, there's no question about it. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ike Hilliard just got knocked inadvertently into the pass route at the last moment after the catch had been made by Sorolla Palmer. Terry Dean again right on target. Five touchdowns in the first half. He set the record of six last year in a whole game. Now Palmer did have a touchdown reception last year against LSU, so that's his second career TD. Look at Terry Dean. Five touchdown passes with 13-20 to go in the first half. Well, the number one ranked Florida Gators have had possession of the football five times so far in this game and five touchdowns on the board. Most recently, a 41-yard march and only four plays. Terry Dean has thrown five touchdown passes here today, and we still have the better part of the second period to go at Florida Field. Shane Edge kicking it. And the man in the middle is Parrott. Foster. Foster. <laughs> <laughs> was nailed. Number 50, Davin Walton. Backup linebacker, a redshirt freshman from Miami. Gator fans will remember uh, his brother, Michael Kerr, who was a head hunting linebacker for the Gators just a few years back. Kerr also played on the Gator basketball team. Didn't he? Yep, he did. Steve well, Babbick on the field. David, you talk about five different receivers, or five receivers, or five scores by passing, four different receivers, two by Jackson, one by Hill, one by Hilliard, one by Palmer. This team from Bill Level looks like it's a faster team on the outside. The wide receiver for here, a lot of team speed. Talk about speed. Kevin Carter ran down Lucius Davis, one of the fastest men on that New Mexico State offense. Yeah, but Kevin Carter is only 6'6", 271. What'd oh, you expect, true. right? He's got to be fast. Look at this again, Jim. Uh, typically, a guy like this, you say, okay, he's all strength and brawn, but uh, this guy's got more than that uh, in his resume, including great speed. Five tackles behind the line last year as a junior, Carter. Well, that stop there, about a three-yard loss. Ledbetter over through the tight end. Poor Sean Manuel, he's been open two or three times out there, and every time Ledbetter has thrown the ball in his direction, he's misfired. Now, Ledbetter's had more success going deep uh, with the wideouts. Yeah. Now it's third and 12. Head coach Jim Hess. His team down by 21 points early in the second period. and Ledbetter goes down again and had to hurry the pass and it's incomplete. There's a penalty flag down though. Penalty flag is down as Ellis Johnson once again decked Cody Ledbetter. Looked like one of the line judges threw the flag. Yeah, they're going to call it against the... We're Aggies. holding on the offense. Penalty decline. Mexico State called for holding, and they still couldn't keep Ellis Johnson out of the backfield. Well, Ellis Johnson's not going to let Kevin Carter get a game ball here. He wants one himself. Those two guys are battling it out right now as the top uh, defender in the front four. Face to face with Ledbetter, with Ellis Johnson. We recall the last punt was never got off, and the leaders went quickly into the end zone. I don't know how Malone didn't block that. Everybody's going to pick it right off his foot. The ball will be down to around the 46-yard line. That ball went right through the hands of Kedra Malone. Kedra got his hands on his hips coming off the field, shaking his head, saying to himself, how in the world did I not block that kick? Kedra Malone, one of the fastest guys on the team. Oh, I don't know. Oh, he went the wrong way. I, he was going to the left of the punter instead of to where the ball was going to be hit, and that's... Well, maybe he was afraid he wouldn't get yeah. the ball and might yeah. be called for roughing. Yeah, that's true. He probably didn't expect to get he got there, real in there so quickly. Donnie Young, Anthony and Rob. 
Washington. Big Beef's taking a rest. New Beef is on the field right now up front. Here's the freshman, Fred Taylor. Tony Gray, the linebacker, stops him after a gain of a couple of yards to the 44-yard line. Reggie Green, 78, uh, in the game right now. Odom getting a rest. Bo Collins, number 79. A true freshman, Jim. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a big fit. Well, that's tough for a true freshman to come in and, and get playing time as, a, as an offensive lineman. You can attest to that. Yeah, it's very difficult to win a position. You'll recall, though, that Jason Odom and, and Reggie, Reggie Grant both started as true freshmen. That's unbelievable. He's got time, and doring has got the ball. Chris Doring at the 27th. Foster on the stop, and there's Doring's first catch of the year. I'm sure that Doring went over to Terry Dean along the sideline at some point and said, hey, remember me? Let me get a piece of this uh, football. Watch Reggie Green now. This, this guy has gotten a lot of All-American mention really the last couple of years. Uh, he puts those arms on that defender, and he has no chance at all. That was big number 95, Mike Jackson. No, excuse me, that was uh, Mojaleski trying to rush. Doring trapped that ball. So it'll be second down at 10 from the 27. Chris Doring's numbers last year, and of course, uh, one of the more memorable moments, if not the most memorable, the big catch against Kentucky with time running out to win that football game. Unbelievable how, that, how big that catch was. Taylor to the 21. And uh, the Gators will have a third and about four. Cedric Walton on the stop. And 10.57 to go in a quarter, and it looks like the Aggies will call timeout. New Mexico State stops the clock with 10.57 to go in the second quarter, and Florida leading by three touchdowns. Florida leads to Mexico State 35 to 14. We're still early in the second quarter. And the Fighting Gators tackle the Kentucky Wildcats Saturday, September 10th at 11.30 p.m. And Sports Channel is right here to bring you all the excitement from Florida Field in Gainesville. Catch all the action on Sports Channel. Check local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage in your area. The Aggies are third, rather the Gators are third and four. Territory. Taylor tries to turn the corner, but cannot. The flag went down. We may have had a face mask. And that, uh, if that is the call, that will give the Gators their first down. I think Tyrone Brewer got his mask. Nice eyes there. I never saw that one. I thought it might be a block in the back. Ooh. There it is. I never saw it. That was ugly. Yeah, he was just there for a second or two, but that's a five-yarder, huh? Well, let's see. Yeah, just yeah. a five. Yeah, he, he let go pretty quickly there. You just can't grab that thing in the first place. No. Keep your hands off. First down at the 14. Doring and Jackson wide left. Mobley and Taylor in the backfield. The tight end out there is Chris Braun. The pitch goes to Taylor. Taylor is to the 10-yard line. Running in behind the tight end, Chris Braun and Dean Golden. Look at Florida's first five possessions. Now, Coach Spurrier is going to have difficulty finding a lot wrong on that game film when you end up with touchdown, 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 touchdown. Pretty good field position, though, after those first two possessions. They started at New Mexico State's 45, 22, and 41, their last three possessions. Gators keep it on the ground with Taylor grinding it inside the 10 to about the 7 or 8. That'll bring up third down for Florida. Deep in Aggie territory. Steve Spurrier masterminding this explosive Gator offensive attack. 
starting his fifth season as head coach at the University of Florida. Yeah, he says when he's the head coach, offensive coordinator, and quarterback coach, he can call any dead gum play he wants. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of them to call. And won't get much argument. Touchdown, Jack Jackson, his third of this game. Not bad coverage by Par uh, Parrish Foster, number two. He thought he was pretty close to Jack Jackson right there, but uh, not close enough as Terry Dean was right on target. Inside receiver is Jackson. Doring runs a little hitch. Break to the flag. Zip. That was a good throw. Oh, uh, yeah. Like you said it, yeah. Parrish had good coverage. Place. Parrish Foster was there. Attention, please. Attention. Six touchdowns. That's right. Ties his own school record in a game. And he's done it with 9.32 left in the first half. Davis with uh, yet another extra point. What a first half for Terry Dean. And we've still got 9.32 to go in the first half. It's 42-14, to 14, Florida. Not a missed tight, folks. It's 42 to 14, Florida leading in the second quarter with a lot of time left in the period. That kick went out of bounds from Shane Edge. Scoring drive for the Gators. This one actually took uh, over two and a half minutes. Eight plays, 46 yards. Terry Dean has thrown six touchdown passes in the first half, three of them to Jack Jackson. Well, that's one way to start getting some uh, Heisman Trophy type talk going, isn't it? You're the number one team in America. In America, you're the quarterback. And uh, with those kind of numbers, that's going to turn some heads around college football, isn't it, Jim? Well, the, the six touchdowns is the amazing thing. That sometimes you can put up big numbers but not finish off drives, you know? Have to take a field goal or not be able to finish off a drive. But Terry Dean has been the leader of that offense that finished off every drive with a touchdown. Football at the 35. And this is Compton for a couple of yards, and that's it. Kevin Carter's on the bottom of that stack, along with uh, Freeman, Jason, number 36. Excuse me, David. Jason Bartley now getting some action at inside linebacker. His brother Ephesians Bartley was an all-star performer here a few years ago. Jason getting his turn now. New Mexico State has scored twice in the first half, but uh, they trail by 42 to 14, and they've called another timeout. That leaves them just one timeout left in the first half of the game. Jack Jackson, the junior from Moss Point, Mississippi, sitting and uh, recollecting those three touchdown receptions here in the first half. And there could be more to come for Jackson and Dean. This could be a record-setting day here at Florida Field for Jackson, Dean, and the Gators. Boy, that was a recruiting coup, wasn't it, to get Jack Jackson yes, out, of, out of Mississippi? Shane Matthews out of Mississippi. Of course, you take your shots every year trying to recruit the best kids around the country, but uh, once in a while, a kid like this will watch your team on television or read about them in the newspaper and say, hey, that's a place I want to go. Six catches, three of them for touchdowns. 91 yards. Three in one game by one receiver is a tie of a, a Gator record, we understand. Is that right? All the great receivers that have come through here, I think somebody caught more than three in a game. It's all over Cody Ledbetter. Campbell, big junior from Miami, 6'3", 287, and he got all of Ledbetter. There's At another the bottom one. of your screen, 
Now, of course, he wasn't blocked, so uh, that, that guard didn't get out there in time to make the block. Yeah, touchdowns uh, game. Chris Doring with three against Mississippi State last year. Jack Jackson with three against Southwest Louisiana. Tommy Durrance with three. Carlos Alvarez, Chris Collinsworth. Mm -hmm. Ricky Natiel, Harrison Houston, Willie Jackson. That's some great names there, but nobody, but nobody with three. Yeah. Well, that's better. And he overthrows Osborne. Yeah, too bad there's not enough time for Jack Jackson to catch another one, you know? Yeah, this game's almost over. Only 8.03 to go in the second quarter. Chad Zeka on to punt again. Now you'll wonder if they're going to set up for the return or with the success they've had with the pressure, will they come after him? Well, the way the Gators have rushed the last couple of punts, Chad Zeka's knees have got to be a little bit wobbly right about now. Now they forced a timeout because of, of an equipment problem with Keeter Malone. It was a yeah. mandatory... Time out as you look at Coach Ron Zook there. Peter's coming over to find out when I get there this time and he's holding the ball, do you want me to go ahead and block the kick or just run past him again? No, he's got some kind of equipment problem and now yeah, the official made him leave and he's off the field. It made the Gators call a timeout. Of course, that's just in the best interests of the young men that they don't uh, play with uh, a major uh, equipment problem. Here we go, Zeka. Gonna try and kick it away from around his 15 yard line. So a little Palmer deep for the Gators. And this is a nice kick. Palmer fair catches the ball at the 39 yard line. Here comes uh, Florida's offense. Terry Dean trotting back out onto the field after the 33 yard kick. Six possessions for the Gators. And six touchdowns for the Gators. Well, this is the seventh time they've had the ball today. This drive starting at their own 39-yard line. Tail back, Elijah Williams. Lines it out to the 43-yard line. And uh, Jaleel Abdullah. And on the stop for New Mexico State. This time Coach Sprayer coming with two tight ends, Nunn and Braun, both in the game. That's a, obviously more of a running formation. Chris Dory, Redell Anthony, the wide receivers. And the two tight ends set for Florida. The pitch to Williams. Williams across the 50. Williams to the 30. Williams to the 20. And finally driven out of bounds by Foster inside the 10-yard line. But we have a flag down back around the line of scrimmage. And they're going to bring it back. That's a great effort downfield by Parrish. Foster number two denying Williams the touchdown. But uh, I was looking at the blocks at the corner, and they seem to be great. Uh, I don't know, but they're obviously a holding somewhere. Maybe we'll get a chance to look at it again, but uh have holding on the offense, the 10 yard penalty, they still be second down. Uh, it seemed to be two or three great blocks at the point of attack. Look to the left of your screen, the tight end makes a great block. Oh, there's a trip back there. I think it was way back here. That, that's a great block right there. None of those players were called for holding. It was somebody around the the on offside. The, on the it was, side, yeah, yeah, it was the offside. And I think he might have reached out with an arm and tripped a defender, and they call that holding, and Elijah Williams comes back after a, a great effort. But Parrish, Parrish Foster, number two, really hustled back on defense to knock Williams out of bounds. And Steve Spurrier goes from the two tight end lineup to the four wide out lineup on second down. And Dean throwing it up for Doring. Almost a good interception by Harvey. But he couldn't pull it down. The ball slightly underthrown, intended for Chris Doring. Well, when Dean does not complete one, it's uh, it's almost a big surprise. Now, Mike Harvey 
We well, understand is the Big West 100 meter champion. That's why he was able he was able to react back there and knock that ball away. Out of Waco, Texas. Nice job by Harvey. 6.57 to go in the second quarter. Dean gets a little pressure, and now he's, uh, he's got a man wide open. And Hill makes the catch at the 27. He had to wait for that football. Dean was running from right to left and throwing across his body. And that may have taken some distance off the throw, but we've got another penalty flag down. And uh, Steve Spurrier, with the visor in hand, Ready to toss it, and we've got another Florida penalty. They're seeing a uh, alignment downfield. Uh, as Terry Dean broke out of the pocket, uh, you mentioned you're absolutely right. He was running left and throwing it across his body. That's why I didn't have the zip on it. But uh, because the play was delayed, somebody must have broken downfield. Have an illegal receiver downfield. So it'll be third down with a five-yard penalty. So New Mexico State dodges uh, another cannonball. And they've been hit by plenty of them in the first half, trailing 42 to 14. Now this will be a huge conversion here, won't it? Third and 21. This would be the first time that New Mexico State has stopped Florida, but they haven't done it yet. He's got time and looking for Anthony, and there's going to be the first punt of the day for Florida. He threw into double coverage over on that far side of the field. Beasley and uh, McIntyre were covering Anthony. And Dean really just threw it away, I think. Are they going to have to have a search party to find Shane Edge? No, there he is. There he, he is. He was paying attention. Here. He was. We would not have blamed him if he'd missed this. But he was paying attention. First punt of the 94 season. What a great freshman year this kid had. What a great career he's had. You know, he's one of the better punters in college football, but when you play for a team that has this kind of an offense, like Edge only punted an average of about three and a half times a game last year. And it has to be hard to develop any real consistency when you only work that many Ooh. times a game, and there's a block. Juana has had a problem with protecting Shane Edge in practice throughout the preseason. In fact, uh, during scrimmages, the Gators have had an easy time of blocking punts. And that time, so did New Mexico State. Enrique Ramirez came through there. It looked like Ben Hanks uh, misjudged what the outside defender was going to do there. Hanks number 11 was the up back. You know, Harold Monk has been doing a great job snapping the ball on extra on special teams. Monk is gone now. He finished his eligibility last year. Kevin Johnson is now the snapper. I don't think that was a poor snap, though. No, Ramirez just did a beautiful job of coming in from the outside. And off to Truehill. Dexter Daniels meets him at the line of scrimmage. And there is no gain. Daniels got help from McMillan. Those two got there first. Florida's defense being asked uh, to stand up here now as New Mexico State has the ball inside the 10. So Florida's offense sputtered, and then the Gators turned the ball over for the first time today. North end zone gets rowdy. Cody Ledbetter trying to call the plays, and here comes the junior quarterback. Way overthrown. Nice catch by a photographer beyond the end zone, but those don't count. Joe Delzel was the intended receiver. Nice effort by the Aggie offensive line there, though, protecting their quarterback uh, very well. Greg Snyder at the uh, right tackle doing a nice job. Now third down and seven. On the seven yard line. Touchdown, Lucius Davis. And that's his third touchdown catch of the game. Right between Darren Hambrick and Mike Harris, number 13, was it? Yeah, Mike Harris on as an extra defender. starts with the protection. No pressure up the middle at all. 
little hook route right beyond the goal line, and the two defenders are caught uh, watching the ball sink into the chest of the Yankee wide receiver. The extra point by Kulin. 63 points have been scored in the first half with five minutes and 42 seconds to go. And Lucius Davis has three touchdown catches. He's matched Jack Jackson here in the first half of the game. And you've got to wonder if there's a little bit of concern in that defensive uh, press box up here in the press box at Florida Field. As New Mexico State has put 21 points on the board, of course, they got the football at the nine-yard line there after the blocked punt. So you can't blame that one totally on the defense. No, but uh, one of the things you need to credit uh, this Aggie team for is their, their heart. They're hanging in there. Very wise, the outstanding uh, volleyball coach here at the University of Florida. They're right in the... They're beginning their season right now, too. They went to Final Four last year. As Peter basketball team got a lot of publicity for that, but so did the lady volleyballers. They're ranked, I think, number seven in the preseason. Won their first match against Stetson convincingly. Yeah, they set a record home home wins, 40-some 40, 40 victories consecutively at home. Larry Kennedy from the 13-yard line. Goes at the 24. Tackle made by Brent Gentrop for New Mexico State. Now, still a lot of time left in the first half. 5:35. You would think there'd be a few seconds left with a score of 42 to 21, but we still got 5:35 left in this first half. You know, the thing also, Jim, is that if the score is 42 to 7 or 42 to 3 or 42 to nothing, Florida might have a tendency, I think, to keep the ball on the ground and really not work too hard to score and get more conservative but with a uh, 42 to 21 score I think Steve Spurrier is going to keep running that regular offense he's going to keep throwing it oh absolutely well, he runs on first down here Williams driven down at the 30 yard line a game of about five by the freshman the tailback James McIntyre grabbed it by the collar and swung into the ground Rodell Anthony was hustling so much there, David, out of camera view that uh, downfield blocking that he actually knocked over a defender and the the official out there. He said, hey, I'm sorry, but the official said, hey, that's okay, kid. Anthony just hustling way downfield. Game will play action fake. Boring got the ball at the 45 and a first down for Florida. Parrish Foster, number two, excellent coverage. Doring is so big and angular that he he really can position himself uh, in front of a defender and make a catch. Now watch this, you get excellent coverage. Can't be covered any better than that, but the ball can't be thrown any better also. So. And a good catch too by Doring. Balls at the 46. Dean's got good protection again. Palmer. A gain of eight to the 46 of New Mexico State. 4.53 and the clock running now. Late in the second quarter. Florida scored on its first six possessions today. And a pair of penalties brought back two long plays on their seventh possession. Or uh, undoubtedly they would have scored again. Williams bumped to the outside. Williams looking for a block. Got one. He's brought down to the linebacker. Manuel to save the touchdown at the 25-yard line. And he got one from Chris Doring. Chris Doring downfield doing a beautiful job. Nothing at the line of scrimmage. Uh, as you mentioned, Elijah Williams literally bounces off the line of scrimmage. Watch this bounce. There's nothing there. Boom. <laughs> but he bounces outside, and now everybody's caught up inside. And look at Doring making the block there along the sideline. for Doring, and the ball is caught inside the five. First and goal for the Gators. Oh, 
Play action hopes to freeze the linebackers. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It's a timing route. The ball's in the air almost as Doreen makes the break. As soon as he comes out of the break, he looks for the football, and there it is. Terry Dean uh, really hot today hitting his receivers. Look at Doreen. He's added some weight, hasn't he? He's got some biceps there. Last year, he was such a string bean. Yeah, he's been in the Rich Tootin's weight program. He's put on some weight. I don't think anybody escapes the Tootin plan, do you? <laughs> I do. I don't go anywhere near him. <laughs> He'd kill me. There's the scoreboard with Florida piling up points at near record pace, but giving up a few as well. And it's a three touchdown difference right now with four minutes and four seconds to go in the second quarter. Terry Dean has completed 19 of 28 for 268 yards and six touchdowns. Let's go down on the sideline to Steve Babbitt. And I'll tell you what, David, a, a target for Terry Dean in this first game has been Sorola Palmer. You know, the preseason has focused a lot on Ike Hilliard and Redell Anthony, the young freshman, which was good because those guys made an impact early. But Sorola Palmer's been here now three years, a junior from Louisiana. Last year, he caught three passes, all in the LSU game, including that first career TD pass that you talked about. Now Sorola Palmer making an impact here in this first game. Florida first and goal. Dean looking for the end zone, and he had Doring, but overthrew it. In fact, he overthrew a couple of rows of uh, fans down there. Well, it's first down, he said, I've got a lot more chances here. I'm not going to do anything stupid. He didn't. He's kind of laughing at himself right there because Doring was so wide open, but he didn't see him, obviously. And he'll get two more chances here, maybe three. Going to try and set a record here. Unless he hands it off to Williams or Bilkey in the backfield. Going and Jackson wide to the right. That's Jackson in motion. Going to try and throw it. Jackson's there. Jackson's got it. Number four for Jack. That's a record. Number seven for Dean. That's a record, isn't it? And the official on one play. Quickly gets over there and tells Jack, don't celebrate too much, son, or we're going to call a penalty on you. It was a spontaneous celebration by Jack, but they got that celebration rule in college football. And Jack was hustled back to the sideline, and there's a smiling Terry Dean. Great protection up front, okay? One, two, three. Only send four guys. It's a crossing route, and Jack Jackson, there's a lot of traffic and oh, a misdirection. Picking, you know, and Jack yeah. was in motion. Yeah going left and he came back across the grain and caught the ball wide open coming left to right. There's the point's good. Watch this again. All right, now Jack Jackson is going to go in motion from the right side of the line of scrimmage. He's going to let the pass rush clear. <laughs> he runs back. <laughs> now that's one of those ball plays Coach Spurrier talks about. That was designed specifically for that kind of field position. And Jack Cooley walks to a high five along the sideline. Couple of records broken there. Seven touchdown passes today for Terry Dean with 3.53 to go in the first half. And Jackson has broken uh, what I think is a surprising record at Florida. Only uh, three touchdown catches in a game, the most ever, which with all the great receivers that have come through this school, I found that hard to believe, but it's true. And Jack Jackson just went past all of them with his fourth today. So he stands above all those other guys with three touchdown catches in a game at the University of Florida. And he may not be finished. There's a lot of football to be played. It's 49 to 21. That's Jay Powell, the man in the middle. to the 25-yard line. You know, Edge has done a good job kicking the ball deep on kickoffs. Sam McCorkle shaking up a little bit, but Sam's up on his feet and making his way back toward the sideline. When I talk about selling out with your body on these coverage teams, Sam McCorkle literally just threw his body through that wedge uh, for the second time today. I've seen him do that, and uh, it takes tremendous courage for a kid to do that, and he came out a little wounded. Kind of like a kamikaze power. 
Ledbetter sets up the screen. He's got Pazula. Pazula, an all-purpose back. He caught 33 passes last year as a junior. They use him in a lot of different ways, but we've not called his name much so far today. Walter Jim Hess and the Aggie coaches. Eight minutes, three seconds to go. The top-ranked Florida Gators trying to hold off this Aggie rally. And two at the Florida five-yard line, and they're going to go for the first down of the touchdown. With 8.03 to go. Florida leads by 42 points. But still the crowd stands up. Florida's defense tries to hold. Ledbetter going to keep on an option. Ledbetter, boy, he made a dive close to that first down marker. Going to be close. Well, he's making some great efforts, isn't he? It, was it really is. Nice call on short yardage, but the Gator defense did a nice job, too, of stringing it out. Looked like they were going to have Ledbetter dead in the backfield, but uh, he bowed his neck and almost almost picked it up. Maybe he did. Here we go. They're going to bring the chains on, and I'm not going to guess on this one. It's too close. Oh, Aggie's short of the first down by less than a yard. Florida takes over on downs, and Jim has Disappointed with that turn of events, and Steve Spurrier, a sigh of relief. His defense has given up 21 points already in this game, and that's more, I'm sure, than Bob Pruitt and Steve Spurrier and company wanted to surrender. And they've thrown for 221 yards to Mexico State, so, you know, that passing game looks pretty good, but the Gators are going to face probably a little bit better in the Southeastern Conference. Opening a conference schedule with the Kentucky Wildcats next week. Eric Kresser quarterbacking now and throwing it deep for Anthony. Anthony, even with his tremendous speed, could not get to that football. Overthrown by a couple of yards. Nice try, though. They weren't off the mark by much. Uh, Kresser with a touchdown pass in the first half. You notice who was covering Anthony? Pretty much at him step for step. Number two, Parrish Foster. Second down and ten. Gators on their own three-yard line. Professor Pump faking and throwing, and that one is picked off by Foster. <laughs> he just reacted back to the ball. He wasn't in coverage right there. I don't believe specifically on... Uh, 84. That's David Nabavi, the intended receiver. The sophomore from Orlando. He played high school ball at Dr. Phillips High School. Nabavi was the intended receiver, number 84. And watch Foster just step right in there and pick it off. Yeah. He reversed, you see? He did like a 180. Turned his back to the ball, then continued to turn and made the interception. Just a great effort. Presser certainly didn't expect that kind of reaction by the defender. That's Florida's first interception thrown in the game. Now the Mexico State with another offensive scoring opportunity. At the 19-yard line of the Gators with seven and a half minutes to go. This is Truehill, or rather Compton. Compton inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. About a five-yard pickup. <laughs> Spotted at the 13 and a half yard line. The score was 56 to 21 at the half. New quarterback for New Mexico State is Tim Snowden, the senior, on a mission Viejo, California. Compton again carries, and Compton stopped near the line of scrimmage. Eddie Lake there to make the stop for the Gators. Ben Hanks was also there to make the tackle. Albert flexing his muscles along the sideline. It is third down and five for the Aggies.
Snowden back to throw. Barnard sacks him. David Barnard, a junior from Miami. That'll bring up fourth down for the Aggies. Well, that was a case where, where Coach Hess decided to put in some new personnel, give some of his kids uh, that made this trip a chance to play, David. I think that's a tribute to Coach Hess that he would put some kids in there that uh, hadn't played yet when they had a chance to score. But uh, the Gator defense was just too tough for that other unit. Bubba Kulin will try a field goal, 37 yards in length. The kick is long enough, but it is no good. It is wide to the right. So the Aggies unable to take advantage of the Gator turnover. And Florida takes possession of the ball at the 20-yard line. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Kevin McGrath. For 25 years, Burger Time has been serving Las Cruces in southern New Mexico. A lot of changes have occurred since we first opened our doors, but one thing has remained the same. Good quality food cooked the way you like it. We are proud to have... New quarterback for the Florida Gators, Brian Schottenheimer. So this is uh, the fourth Florida quarterback to get into the action tonight. Mobley, the ball carrier, and a flag goes down as Mobley picks up two or three yards. Brian Schottenheimer, after, uh, we'll tell you about him a little bit after this call. Five yards on the defense. Here's Brian, his dad, uh, Marty, the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, the fourth string quarterback, started his college career at the University of Kansas. But uh, here's a very intelligent kid, sophomore, knows that he wants to be a coach, knows that he wants to learn as much about offensive football as he can, so he comes to the University of Florida, knowing also that it's unlikely that he'll get a lot of playing time, at least right away. He learns offensive football from one of the greatest in the game, and that's Steve Spurrier. Schottenheimer on the carry, and gets the first down, and took a pretty good shot in the process. And Marty Schottenheimer was also a player in the NFL, as well as, as, well as a coach now. Look at these penalties tonight. Oh, that's that's the ugly part of this game. Mostly in the second half, too, I think. I think it was six and four in the first half, so that's pretty well split. Ten in the first half, nine in the second. Schottenheimer hands off to Bobley. Bobley out to the 44-yard line. Gary Jesse made the tackle. Probably had 42 yards last year as a sophomore, or rather as a freshman, number 23 there out of Brooksville. He played high school football in Fernando County. The leading returning rusher for the Gators with 42 yards. <laughs> Normally you'd be concerned, wouldn't you? But uh, that's not the case. Now with Elijah Williams, a redshirt freshman. Fred Taylor, a true freshman. Showing some good speed, power, picking up a first down and keeping the ball inbound. So the clock continues to tick. Three and a half to go. How about Tyrone Baker, too? He's got a bit of an injury right now, but he's a redshirt freshman running back that the Gators think uh, yeah. will play some, too. Yeah, he's been, uh, been slowed by injuries in the preseason, but he's a good one also right here from uh, right here in Gainesville. Here's a freshman, big 76 on that offensive line, Keith McMahon out of Bradenton, one of the great high school programs in this state, Bradenton Manatee. And Southeast, what a program they have. Schottenheimer throwing the ball, almost 
a catch by Terrace Ross, a freshman tight end from Dade City. Pretty good coverage by James McIntyre back there, though. That stops the clock with 2.54 to go. Yeah, Reggie Green was from Braden and Southeast, and this young fellow's from Braden Manatee. A lot of people are getting a, a chance to play tonight on both sides of the ball. Wiley Rich is staffing. He's the center right now. He's a freshman from uh, Santa Fe High School in the Gainesville area. Fort White, actually. Schottenheimer with the throw, and uh, the pass is caught by Deborah Gibbon, the fifth-year senior from St. Petersburg. He's had little playing time in his collegiate career. Well, that's his first college reception. Little guy, 5'7". And he'll get to tell his uh, grandchildren one day that he made a big catch back there in 1994 against New Mexico State. The first down at the 40-yard line, 2.46 to go. pass intended for the tight end Tremaine Allen and incomplete the Gators have back-to-back -back SEC contest big ones coming up Kentucky here and then at Tennessee so it's going to get a little bit more difficult and then they play at Ole Miss three weekends from now big offensive numbers put up tonight by Florida but not record-breaking numbers, 774 is the single-game record. Florida in 1982 got that many yards against West Texas State when they scored 77 points in that game. Schottenheimer on a blitz, gets knocked down, but throws a beautiful pass, and it is caught. That is a sensational catch by David Nababi. And not a bad throw either by Schottenheimer. Nababi's not even on the Gator roster that the uh, media folks gave us today. They didn't expect him to get on the field. But uh, not only does he get on the field, he makes the best catch of the evening. Well, that Just is a nice. beautiful grab right there. And he says, look at this. I, now, that's what a kid wants to do. He wants to get a chance so he can show the coach that he can do it. Great catch by Nababi out of... Orlando's Dr. Phillip High School. Keeper Malone, the ball carrier. Malone diving into the touchdown. Now, Keeper Ma Malone was a tailback for a number of years until he got moved to the secondary, and they gave him a chance to go back tonight. I guess he's obviously number three on the depth chart at tailback. That's the first time that he's carried the ball. He was converted in the spring of 93 to the secondary, and now he gets a chance in a blowout game situation. Look at the speed, though, that Malone shows just running away from Beasley. Well, they, they knew that he wasn't going to play with Eric Rett playing tailback, and they needed to get Kedra on the field, so they moved him to defensive back so he could help out there, and he's worked his way into the lineup there as, a, uh, as the number two corner, but now he gets to come back and play tailback. Good for him. Judd Davis makes it 10 for 10, and that is a Gator record for extra points in a game. It's time for more exciting Aggie football. Well, a lot of folks have stayed around at Florida Field to watch this Gator route. Gators have always loved a good route, and they've seen one tonight. 70 to 21. Florida racking up the points in huge numbers tonight against New Mexico State on opening night. Ball carried back to the 23 yard line, and that's where New Mexico State will take the second. 10 touchdowns tonight. The Gators just need one more to match the school record. 
for points in a game. Brian Schottenheimer directed that eight play 80 yard scoring drive. Malone with a 13 yard run, but Nabavi's spectacular stretched out catch down to the 13 yard line, set it up. Great throw too by Schottenheimer on that play. This is Compton across the 25 to the 27. Pick up of, a, of about four yards, and the clock continues to wind down. 152 to go. Well, Terry Dean had a huge first half for the Gators. Eric Presser looked good at quarterback. Danny Warfel could not uh, seem to generate a lot of offense with the group that he was on the field with in the third quarter, although the Gators did get one touchdown there. And off to Montez, Ernie, Ernie Montez on the carry. A big player here for New Mexico State. 6'5", 300 pounds. Yeah, I think uh, 300 is a conservative number there when you talk about Blair's weight. <laughs> That's on a good day. <laughs> Give him a bigger shirt. He needs a bigger shirt. That's what it is. <laughs> Snowden pitches it. Montez, oh, the ball carrier. Nice play. And Walton brings him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Ernie Montez with a little dip to the inside there. The sophomore get a chance to play. Demetri Jackson also tripped him up, number 27. That was a nice little uh, dip and run right there. That might, might have been the biggest ru rushing gain of the night for the Aggies. One minute to go. A long night, but I guarantee you it's been a lot longer over on the other side of the field than on Steve Spurrier's side. Montez again picks up two or three. Four or five Gators there to stack him up. But you, you know, Arizona was uh, certainly in the top five in most polls. Uh, many people think Arizona might eventually be the national champion. Be interesting to see how these Aggies do against uh, Arizona next week as they go out to there to play. It'll be another huge challenge for yes, it will. these young men. And the Gators uh, open up their SEC championship uh, hopes by playing uh, Kentucky here at Florida Field. Quarterback is Stoughton. Perry almost had it. Stoughton takes the ball out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Well, Scott Perry, a junior from Longwood out of Lake Mary High School, almost had Snowden wrapped up back there in the backfield, but couldn't quite finish off the job. Elijah Brown's in the game now, a redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Big number 99 is McDonald Ferguson. As we said, just about everybody, and perhaps even everybody that's dressed out and available to play has been able to get some playing time tonight against New Mexico State. Only 10 seconds left. Brian Kovac, an inside linebacker, a junior from Fort Lauderdale on the field, number 55. Snowden cranks one out there, and it's incomplete with three seconds to go. That stops the clock for one more play. See if we can pick up a few more of those defenders out there for you. Pat Lowe is on the field. Redshirt freshman number 38 from Fort Lauderdale. Looks like Malone and Weary are the cornerbacks. Fred Weary, Kedra Malone. Well, it's good to give everybody a chance to play. The Gators were hoping that this game would present that opportunity. And that big first half, that thing's going in the right direction. Last play of the football game. And that's the number one team in the nation, the Florida Gators, and uh, their head coach, Steve Spurrier, walking out of here with a 70 to 21 victory against New Mexico State as both of these teams open up the 1994 season. We'll be back in just a moment.
there over New Mexico State by a score of 70-21. This is Steve Babick with head coach Steve Spurrier on Florida Phil. And coach, congratulations. What an offensive display in the first half by Terry Dean. Yeah, we did have a lot of good passes and completions, but uh, this team couldn't match up with us talent-wise. Jim Hess does a super job. They'll be competitive in their conference, but uh, good thing nobody got hurt on either team tonight. Eli Williams and Fred Taylor show they can carry the ball and make the tough runs. Yeah, it was good experience for both those guys, and we played, we played pretty well, but we, we had some a punt block. We had some things we need to play better at. Jack Jackson, talk about uh, the play of him, how big he was today. Well, he was open a lot. He was supposed to do what he did today. And uh, if he can do this against Tennessee and Kentucky and Auburn and Georgia, then we'll be we'll be smiling a lot more. And Coach, okay. your biggest concern uh, defensively, what, uh, what are you going to be talking uh, about? We, we're okay. We just need to tighten up pass coverage a little bit. Okay, the thoughts of head coach Steve Spurrier. The Gators win the home open over 1994 over the Aggies of New Mexico State, 70 to 21. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. And uh, Jim Yarbrough, Steve Spurrier obviously thinks that uh, this team has got to get a little bit better before they take on the likes of Tennessee and Florida State in the SEC competition they'll face down the road. Well, I'm sure he's excited about the 71 points or 70 points, uh, but the defense did give up the big play, and that's something they wanted to stop. And uh, with Kentucky coming to town and the SEC battle starting next week, you know the coach will be uh, looking at those films and trying to get the guys to play better, both offensively and defensively. But uh, certainly I think they didn't jeopardize their number one rating in the country. Now the Gators came in ranked number one, and uh, it's a pretty good bet that they'll still be there when the polls come out later on this weekend and early on in the week. So the Gators win it 70-21 to tonight to open up the season against New Mexico State. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the University of His first college score, and is he ever excited? To see him give that little shake and bake there, he just kind of give a little limp leg and then turned on the, the Jets to get in the corner. He is going to be a good one, real good one. Watch the, watch the little hesitation and limp leg right, right here. Boom, <laughs> look at that. Just gave him that step, and then he turns on the power to dive inside the pylon. And uh, he made that move on Cedric Walton, who is probably the top defender in that New Mexico State defense. Yeah. Judd Davis pounds in the extra point. And the Gators' ninth touchdown tonight is on the ground after eight thrown up in the air. And it is 63 to 21, Florida leading New Mexico State. Point after touchdown, and uh, he's nine of nine. You think Judd Davis is off to a fine start in defending his Lou Groza award? Nine of nine, not too bad. He'd probably like to have a field goal or two thrown in there, too, just to make things interesting for him, though, Steve. They tried to the end around with Davis twice now. First time it didn't work, second time, more of the same. Ellis Johnson, though, again, David. Ellis Johnson destroying the play initially. He's had a heck of a game. Well, look, look how tight that skin is on that kid. He's must be close to 285 pounds. I bet his body fat's less than 10%. He's made some solid licks on New Mexico State quarterbacks and running backs and receivers. Ellis Johnson, a senior from Wildwood. He's on some preseason All-America list. Looks like that caliber player here tonight. Led better running from Johnson and uh, Carter and throws it incomplete. Well, I don't think I'd go towards that side of the line of scrimmage with Ellis Johnson and Kevin Carter on the same side. You know, I'd be, I'd be a little reluctant to go after those guys. They're doing a job tonight. We talked about the, the need for one or both of those guys to really excel and uh, uh, they're having a, a good game. Eric Kresser warming up. Kresser played uh, the tail end of the second quarter. That's Brian Schottenheimer. 
Marty Schottenheimer's son, fourth string quarterback at the University of Florida. Beautiful pass and catch by Manuel, and the tight end has a big New Mexico State first down at the 30 yard line of the Gators. Well, he got matched up with uh, the linebacker. The linebacker right there, Kevin Walton, number 50, who's substituting on the depth chart and playing inside linebacker. Who else was getting over there? One of the safeties, Harris. Mike Harris. You know, Ledbetter, when he has time to throw Jim, he's been pretty effective. Oh, yeah, he's done an excellent job, really. He's playing with a lot of heart. Uh, you know, he's doing everything he can to to put points on the board. He's he's a nice quarterback, doing a nice job. We have a dead ball, illegal procedure, offensive lineman moving, the five-yard penalty. There's David Barnard. Big fella. Hadn't missed too many meals, do you think? Oh. Did you ever look like that? No. Not in my dreams. Like, those guys are so big. So powerful. A lot of time in the weight room there. But better sets his feet, throws a strike again to Manuel. To the 24-yard line. Well, when he gets those feet planted, gets a good look at the field, he's, he's effective. He's going to be tough out there in the Big West. Oh, he's taking a pounding, but uh, he's delivering that football. Reminds me of uh, a few years ago when Casey Weldon was here with the Seminoles, and he was taking a pounding, but he kept moving the ball down the field. He kept making those throws, and that's what Ledbetter's doing. He's getting hit on every play, but he's he's fighting back. Second down, and again, he's got time, and Pazula's got the ball. Brian Pazula dives across the 15 of the 13-yard line. <coughs> Mexico State putting together an impressive drive in the fourth quarter. First down to Mexico State. And they've uh, kept control of the football for much of this second half, which is uh, one of the primary reasons Florida has just one touchdown in the second half. Haters have not been as sharp offensively in the second half as they were in the first, but New Mexico State has had a lot to do with it by keeping the football as well. Harris and Osborne are wide to the left. Audible the line and movement on the left side of the line for New Mexico State. The left tackle over there got confused. That's tough to hear when the crowd makes this kind of noise and they're checking off. That's why the home field advantage is so ball. great. Illegal procedure on the offensive line. The five yard penalty. You literally cannot hear anything when the volume is raised up uh, at a place like Florida Field and that's what happened with the end zone helping out the last play. Pretty good numbers there by Cody Ledbetter. First down inside the 20. 